Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we begin debate on the proposed budget of the Commission on Human Rights. Rather, resume debate on the proposed budget of the Commission on Human Rights, and for this purpose, recognize the Honorable Raul Del Mar of the 1st District of Cebu City. So moved, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Raul Del Mar is recognized to sponsor the budget of uh, human rights. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the gentleman from the party list Sagip, the Honorable Rodante Marcoleta. So moved, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Marcoleta is recognized to interpolate the sponsor. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And with the indulgence of the good sponsor, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, what is the, what's the budget of the Commission of Human Rights? Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, um, the Commission, CHR, proposed a budget of 1.723 billion, but uh, the, the DBM reduced uh, it by 60 percent, and so that is now what we are discussing the net uh, amount of 678,049. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, under Article 13, Section 18, Paragraph 1 of the Constitution, one of the intended functions of the CHR is to investigate on its own or on complaint by any other party all forms of human rights violations involving civil and political rights. This is correct, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. Very accurate, Your Honor. That is in Section 18, Paragraph Number 1. Which means that any group of people who violate the Constitution are subject to the investigation of the CSR motu proprio. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, the Mamasapano massacre is perhaps the most tragic, the most virulent, the most revolting, and the most brutal face of human cruelty that blackened the image of our country in recent history. Have you seen, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, how the 44 members of the special, the SAF, have been ignominiously maimed, mutilated, and mercilessly killed? Is that uh, it, Your Honor? Uh, your question uh, is, uh, what uh, did the CHR do about it? No, my question first, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, have you at least seen or have you observed how the 44 members of the SAF have been ignominiously maimed, mutilated, and mercilessly killed. Yes, I saw it in the papers, Your Honor, and I read about it. Thank you. Does the CSR believe that the members of the SAF 44 have human rights? Yes, of course, Your Honor. Is the CSR sincere in getting to the bottom of the bots operation to determine once and for all those who are criminally liable? Yes, as a matter of fact, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, uh, the CHR has already conducted their investigations on this matter, and they found that uh, both sides, uh, there were uh, human rights violations and humanitarian law uh, violations. On the part of the soldiers, the police that were killed, as well as the civilians, Your Honor. Who are the persons identified to be liable, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor? The soldiers? Especially, the, specifically, Your Honor, the, the rebel who were killed in cold blood, the soldiers that were already wounded. Well, what about the persons or the, the, the part or the group of persons who, uh, who planned the operations? Did the CHR find anything or anybody liable? Uh, the, the, the investigation did not go too far, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker. It only dealt on the incident itself. It did not go too far. That is your answer. What was uh, in focus, Your Honor, was the violations uh, of uh, human rights at the level of the event itself and uh, to look at uh, the aspect only of human rights. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. So that means, Your Honor, that as to who planned it and other details is left to, to, the investi to other investigative bodies. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. Under Article 13, Section 18, Paragraph 8, the Constitution is very clear. If the CSR is indeed interested in determining who are criminally responsible in the massacre of the sub 44, the CSR should at least grant immunity from prosecution to any person whose testimony 
or whose possession of documents or other evidence is necessary or convenient to determine the truth. Is it not correct to assume, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, that it is the obligation of the CHR to determine the truth behind this operation? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the purpose uh, and objective of their investigation is to ferret out the, the truth uh, uh, on the matter. And in this, you are correct in saying that under um, subparagraph 8, that they are authorized to grant immunity from prosecution to any person whose testimony or whose possession of documents or other evidence is necessary or convenient to determine the truth in any investigation conducted by it or under its authority. But uh, in this particular case, Your Honor, uh, no one person uh, asked DCSR for uh, granted, to be granted immunity. Then uh, the CSR is not serious in its job, Mr. Speaker, because in finding the truth, it should not leave any stone unturned. More particularly on the part of those persons who planned the entire operation. If you would say that you did investigate but did not go far in determining the very truth about this, then the CSR is not doing its job. Next question, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. The human dimension of the atrocities generated by the rebellion in the city of Marawi is both detestable and abominable. Did the CHR on its own investigate the extent of human rights violation of the Maute group on the affected civilian population? Yes, Your Honor, in coordination with the uh, Regional Human Rights uh, Commission of the ARRM. So what is the report? What was disclosed in the report? Who violated whom? What is the extent of violation of human rights? Did they go to Marawi City and investigated uh, the members of the Maute group? The uh, CSR, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, condemned uh, in the most uh, uh, strictest terms the, the uh, action of the Maute group and uh, there are ongoing investigations uh, conducted, not only by the CSR, but of other uh, investigative bodies. And uh, uh, that is where we are, Your Honor. Uh, this has not been completed yet as of the moment. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, the Constitution did not say that the CSR should condemn whatever the group is doing or whatever has been done in violation of human rights. The Constitution is very explicit. There is a necessity to determine the truth based on Section 18, Paragraph 8, Article 13 of the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, the Abu Sayyaf group that had for long made kidnapping for ransom an industry and source of livelihood, beheading the hostages who were unable to pay off their demand for payment and to add insult to injury the infamy is publicly announced in open defiance and ridicule of government authorities. Did the CHR on its own investigate the propensity of their despicable and incorrigible acts with the view of documenting the extent to which their human rights have been desecrated? Yes, again, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, uh, with due indulgence to Your Honor on the use of uh, condemning. That is the situation, Your Honor. The CSR condemns the attack of the Abu Sayyab group in Maloso, Basilan, last August 21st, resulting in the death of nine people. CSR also calls for the protection of civilians in terrorist-stricken areas. So uh, there is uh, this uh, report, Your Honor, of uh, made, and uh, we will be furnishing you the details on this. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, anybody in this august body can condemn the brutal acts perpetrated by this group. This institution can do that. We have done that so many times because the act and those acts are condemnable. But this is not the function of the CSR. The function of the CSR, while you can condemn, 
That is not the entire thing. You are supposed to investigate every human rights violation, irrespective of any group, any location, whether they are soldiers, whether they are policemen, whether they are members of the NPA, or Maute group, or Abu Sayyaf. There should not be a selective application of investigation. You can condemn, but that is not the function of the CHR, Mr. Speaker. You are asking for a budget before this hall, but we need to investigate whether or not that budget is being utilized precisely to do your constitutional obligation. Your Honor, they not only condemn this, uh, uh, this uh, human rights uh, violations. Condemning is part of their action in investigating uh, human rights violations, whether by state authorities or by non-state authorities. So, this is still ongoing, Your Honor. And uh, um, if we can have a partial report on this, then we will, uh, uh, if you wish, uh, before uh, or wait until such time as uh, their investigation will be completed, then that's the time we will furnish you a copy, Your Honor. But in view of your questions here, we will uh, submit a partial report which uh, states their actions uh, as of today. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. And that's why the budget is... I am not sure I'm getting the correct answer, yes, because uh, if you talk about reports, these reports should have been submitted a long time ago. There's so many of these acts already perpetrated by these people. Now you're, you're saying that you're about to submit reports. Yes, In Your the Honor. CHR website, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, there appears a press release dated September 1, 2017, which reads... Seats are concerned over President Duterte's remarks against UN Special Rapporteur and Human Rights Defenders. Defenders. The last paragraph of which states, and I quote, Seats are, as conscience of the government and the people, remains firm in its stance that this campaign against drugs, because of social ills, forcing people to drug abuse and drug addiction. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, why is the Seats are concerned over President Duterte's remarks against the UN Special Rapporteur. Why? Because, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, she is an officer of the UN Human Rights uh, System, and uh, as such, must be accorded uh, protection as well. What is the answer, Mr. Speaker? She is an official of the UN uh, Human Rights uh, System, system uh, and as such, as, as national, as a special rapporteur, special rapporteur reports to the High Commissioner on Human and reports to the High Commissioner on Human Rights. And so uh, she is uh, accorded the um, courtesy and the assistance that she needs when uh, she conducts her own uh, um, mandate here in the country. So, Mr. Speaker, following your answer, the CSR, CSR defers more to the UN Special Rapporteur than the President of the Republic of the Philippines. Yes, Your Honor, I don't think that is... Uh, uh, we uh, disagree with that because uh, CSR attends to everybody, especially to the president uh, of the country. How can you not give uh, the, uh, the best uh, uh, service and uh, uh, accommodation to uh, the president uh, compared to the other person? So th this is universal, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker. Uh, they uh, protect and promote human rights uh, uh, of all persons uh, and, uh, and conducts investigations upon the instructions of requests of not only uh, of everyone, Your Honor, including the President. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, the New York Times editorial dated April 25, 2017, bannered the following. Let the world condemn Duterte. Was the CHR aware of this editorial? 
Like you, Your Honor, uh, they read it. Okay. But they have no... We did not participate in this writing. Participate. We did not participate in this writing. In this, uh, in this written press release, Your Honor, they have nothing to do with it. So they are aware of that editorial, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor? Yes, Your Honor, they are aware. Did the CSR express concern over the New York Times' unfair and absurd call for world's condemnation of the President of the Republic of the Philippines? They did not express, Your Honor, Why? Mr. Speaker, comments on the editorial, but they expressed concern on the deaths that resulted from, from the incident. The Mr. War Speaker, Your Honor, in this particular case. does President Duterte have human rights? <laughs> Everyone, Your Honor. Thank you. Especially the President. Even Your Honor is entitled uh, to be protected uh, in your human rights, Your Honor. Does CHR think that the human rights of President Duterte were violated by New York Times? No, Your Honor. Uh, uh, first reason is that uh, the journalists who wrote uh, this editorial have a freedom of expression. And uh, secondly, public officials uh, are held to abide by by the standards set in our Constitution on human rights. So the journalists, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, have the rights to express themselves. And the President of the Philippines have no right to express himself. Is that it? <laughs> oh, of course not, Your Honor. Uh, uh, the President especially has, uh, so has why, the same why rights. So why is CSR in... concerned when the President only express himself? But CSR was not concerned at all when the New York Times Ask the world's condemnation of the president of the Philippines. No, uh, Your Honor, uh, uh, the CSR is there doing its job and cannot uh, uh, respond to each and every incident uh, and to each and every statement that is made. Uh, so uh, uh, this, Your Honor, is uh, fundamental. Uh, if we respect uh, everybody's uh, uh, right, uh, human rights, the more we, we uh, will defend uh, the President's uh, human rights, Your Honor. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, what law created the Commission on Human Rights? The Constitution itself, Your Honor, under the provisions that you have just cited, uh, you cited the provisions on uh, uh, the functions of the CSR in Section 17. And so, uh, if I may quote your honor, it is just a one-liner, Section 17, this, there is hereby created an independent office called the Commission on Human Rights. Mr. Speaker, your honor, and, is Section uh, 17, Paragraph 1, self-executory? There is a... Uh, now the question is, a, uh, is Section 17, Paragraph 1, Article 13 of the Constitution, self-executory? Not uh, really, Your Honor, but... Uh, so which... But uh, wait, Your Honor, let me finish my uh, reply to you. But the corresponding uh, uh, authority uh, and, uh, of the, and creation of the uh, CHR is contained pursuant to this... Uh, mandate of the Constitution was contained in the Executive Order Number 163, series of 1987, um, signed by the President then, Cory Aquino, which gives flesh to the um, provisions of the Constitution since it uh, um, enumerates and specifies uh, the um, provisions that needed to be covered in a legislative measure. This, uh, the President, President Cory Aquino, was at that time when she uh, made this executive order uh, exercising both ex executive and legislative uh, uh, powers, Your Honor, because this was made before our Congress uh, uh, function. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, you were mentioning executive order number 163. 
which was dated May 5, 1987. Is this the basis you are referring to, Mr. Speaker, in creating the Commission on Human Rights? The Constitution, as we stated earlier, is the basis. No, Mr. Speaker, that's, this a, that's is a very a simple question. You said that the provision that you cited was not self-executory. That is correct because there, is, there should be a law to create an agency. And then you cited Executive Order Number 163, dated May 5, 1987, to be the law that created the CHR. Am I correct to assume that? Yes, Your Honor. The mandate is given by the Constitution and the Executive Order Number 163 is the uh, implementing uh, legislation on the matter. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, the 1987 Constitution was ratified on February 2, 1987, in a plebiscite. And it was proclaimed in force on February 11, 1987. The Executive Order was issued on May 5, 1987. It is very clear that the President of the Philippines at the time, Mrs. Cory Aquino, has no more legislative powers. It should be Congress which should have, been, which should have created the CHR. Mr. Speaker, it is not correct to say that because the Constitution mentioned the CHR, it is already created. As a matter of fact, the Civil Service Commission was created by Republic Act 2260. The Commission on Audit was created by Presidential Decree 898, dated March 3, 1976. The Commission on Elections, it was the National Assembly through Commonwealth Act Number 667, which created a statutory Commission on Elections. Commonwealth Act Number 657 was enacted, reorganizing the Commission as constitutional body. The Ombudsman, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, Although mentioned by the Constitution, was created under Republic Act 6770. There should be a law in order to create the CSR. Executive Order Number 163, which was issued in 1987 of May 5, is invalid. Because at that time, Mrs. Cory Aquino, the President of the Philippines, already lost her legislative power. Sir Speaker, Your Honor, how can we appropriate budget to an agency which has not been validly created. I move that we show the sign, a 1,000 peso budget to the CHR. So move, Mr. Speaker. Uh, before the, uh, any motion, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the let majority, me clarify. We let me second clarify the motion first. of the uh, gentleman the, the from the party sir. list once again. So objection, Mr. Speaker. And may we explain our objection, objection please? please. Now, before that, Your Honor, let Your me. Leader. Mr. Speaker, let our me, parliamentary uh, status is that let me the Honorable Mark Coletta has proposed a motion. We have seconded it. We object. There is an objection. We object. Now we divide the House. So no, no. that is our parliamentary Speaker, status. May we, may, we be given a, our may we be given a Mr. chance Speaker. to explain our position? Mr. Mr. Speaker, I move the motion that the Honorable is to remove the gentleman like from Caloocan. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I have the floor. Majority Leader, what is the parliamentary status? Our parliamentary status is that the Honorable Mark Coletta has made a motion duly seconded by the majority floor leader. It has been opposed by the gentleman from Caloocan. And we continue to oppose we, it too. I move that we divide the House. Mr. Speaker, I move that Mr. Speaker, 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 Mr.
Majority Mr. Leader. Speaker, our parliamentary status is to allow those objecting to the motion of the Honorable Marcoleta to explain their objection. We shall first recognize from the minority the Honorable Atienza. Next, he will be given three minutes to explain his objection. Next will be the Honorable Lagman to be given Mr. three Speaker, minutes what from the independent. I'm also objecting. And Mr. Speaker. lastly, the Honorable Sponsor, Mr. three Speaker, minutes Leader. to explain his vote. I move now that we Mr. recognize to explain his objection the gentleman from the party list Buhay, the Honorable Lito The Atienza. Honorable Atienza is now uh, recognized. Salamat po. Kinakailangan pong ipaliwanan namin to. Kapagkat mali-mali po yung mga sinabi ng ating uh, kagalang-galang na Marcoleta na baka paniwalaan ninyong lahat ay bumoto tayong lahat ayon sa kanya. Ang mga sinabi niya po ay puro mga defective. Purong puno ng depekto. Pati ang Pangulo ng Bansa, idepensa ng Commission on Human Rights, palagay ko naman napakalabo nun. Madaling sabihin, madaling pumintas, pero napakahirap ng trabaho ng Commission on Human Rights. Pag ito po ay inabolis natin ngayon, wala na pong pupuntahan ng ating bansa. Sapagkat ang problema natin ngayon ay violations of human rights. So the Commission should not even be given 600 million. They should be given maybe 2 billion so that they can function properly. Ngayon, sinabi po ng ating kagalang-galang ng Margoleta, si Pangulong Aquino Ray nagkamali at hindi rin po bumuo sapagkat hindi na rin siya dapat. Alam nyo, nung panahong yon, we were all under a revolutionary government. The President had every right to, to create laws through her own hand, signed by herself. Kung hindi niya naaalala yun, naaalala ko po, sapagkat kabilang po eh, na lumaban kay Mr. Marcos, kami po, ang kasama ni Pangulong Cory, at ako po isa sa mga pumalakpak, nung binuo niya ang Commission on Human Rights. This should not be abolished. It should be strengthened because of the times. We are now passing through a very narrow path to lose our democracy or to gain and strengthen it. I say we should all defend democracy because ito na po ang ating maaaring ipamana sa ating mga anak. Let it not be said that in the middle of the darkness of night, everyone slept. This representation is awake and will defend democracy all the way. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I move for the recognition of the Honorable Edsel Lagman. So move, the Honorable Mr. Edsel Lagman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, three minutes. the reason why the distinguished uh, representative Marcoleta is asking for the reduction of the budget of the CSR to only 1,000 pesos is that he's accusing the CSR for dereliction of duty by not investigating the offenses committed by the Abu Sayyaf, by the Maote group, and other rebel groups. He has failed to distinguish that there is a difference between common crimes and violations of human rights. Not all killings, abductions, and ambushes are considered human rights violations. By international and domestic standards, a human rights violation is an offense committed by the state or agents of the state. Non-state parties like rebels, terrorists, and outlaws, when they commit crimes, they are sanctionable under the revised penal code because they commit common crimes, not violations of human rights. The CSR has no jurisdiction over non-state parties. It has jurisdiction over offenses committed by the state and agents of the state against the people of the Philippines. Mr. Speaker, when the CSR, when the committee of the CSR was committed by President Cory Aquino in May, 1987, she was still exercising uh, her legislative powers under the revolutionary government because Congress, the Eighth Congress, has not been convened at that time. Now, the CSR is a constitutional body. No less than the, Cong the distinguished Marcoleta has admitted this. Under the Constitution, there is hereby created an independent office called the CSR, emasculating 
and killing the CSR with an annual budget of only 1,000 pesos is unconstitutional because it virtually abolishes a constitutional body or office by legislative fiat. We cannot abolish a constitutional office by legislation. Honorable Laman, please why not? Yes. Moreover, the CSR has fiscal autonomy. Under the Constitution, the approved annual appropriation of the CSR shall be automatically and regularly released. It is the height of irony and fantasy for us to automatically release a minuscule and embarrassing, disgraceful budget of only 1,000 pesos to a constitutional body like the CSR, which is needed to be in existence and functioning because of the so many human rights violations presently obtaining in our country. For all of those reasons, Mr. Speaker, I am objecting to the motion of the distinguished Marcoletta to reduce the budget of the CSR to only 1,000 pesos annually. It is a minuscule, embarrassing, and unconstitutional move if we approve such motion of the distinguished Marcoletta. Thank you so much. Honorable the Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the recognition of the Honorable Raul Delmar. So move, Mr. Speaker. You know, the Honorable Raul Delmar is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. You have three minutes to assist uh, the Majority Leader. Your speech. Uh, before my objection, I would like to restate that at the time that President Corazon Aquino issued Executive Order Number 163, it was before Congress convened. That being the case, she possessed uh, both executive and legislative powers. So let me go to my objection, uh, Mr. Speaker, to the motion to reduce the budget of the Commission of CSR from 678 million, 049, to 1,000. We used to threaten agencies with reducing their annual budget to even one peso or zero. But uh, this uh, 1,000 must be uh, the adjustment to inflation. But really, Your Honor, it's ridiculous, especially so because it involves an agency created by the Constitution as an independent body to serve a crucial concern of our nation, to investigate on its own or on complaint by any party all forms of human rights violations involving civil and political rights. Among the reasons for my objection, Mr. Speaker, is first, because it would, in effect, cripple, maim, even kill CSR, which surely is not what the Constitution intends. Seriously, can, we, can Congress legally go against a clear purpose and intent of the Constitution? So, uh, uh, who's kidding who here, Mr. Speaker? 1,000 is practically abolishing the CSR because CSR can no longer function on such a ridiculous amount. And so, we are actually abolishing, in, in fact, the CSR, which we don't have the power to do so because, because it is only an amendment to the Constitution that can do that. Second, because CSR has obligations under the Constitution as well as to the international community that upholds human rights. Third, its functions are misunderstood by many people, including some of our leaders, who think CSR defends only criminals. I wonder how we must look at the global community when we don't recognize and appreciate the job that the CSR has been doing. We need to be reminded that CSR was created to help curb excesses and abuses in the seat of power. The framers of the 1987 Constitution saw it fit to create CSR as an independent body free from coercion or reprisal. Madam, Mr. Speaker, our lack of empathy with CSR could also be because many of us think that all victims of human rights are drug dealers and criminals. Does this ever occur to you that many victims of human rights could also be innocent people, even our neighbors, friends, and family? Fourth, even assuming CSR has been deficient in its yeah, work. I mind, the honorable gentleman, winding up, uh, Mr. Speaker. Consume your three minutes. Yes, uh, winding up. Even assuming that this R has been efficient, deficient in its work, the remedy is not to terminate or immobilize the constitutionally mandated agency. Let the people who would vote on future amendments to the Constitution decide. This fate of the Commission on Human Rights, not us, 
not by mutilating and mangling its budget. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, our parliamentary status is that now we shall divide the House. Those in favor of the Honorable Mr. Speaker, Marco Letta's motion for a nominal will voting say measure, Mr. yes, Speaker. A, and those Mr. who Speaker. are against will say nay. So with that, Mr. Speaker, we will now divide the House. We will now divide the House. We divide the House first before it, you can move any nominal voting. If you wish to do so, up, after the voting. Those who are in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those who are against, say nay. Nay. The eyes have it. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Malinaw po yun. Malakas yung nay. Mr. Speaker, now I move for um, nominal voting. Let, 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 let us uh, clarify the voting. The <laughs> voting is for uh, those who are in favor for the reduction of budget of CHR to 1,000. Please say aye. Aye. Those... <laughs> Ituloy mo, Mr. Speaker. Uh, please, uh, the gallery, uh, do not vote with his uh, voting. I would like to, to clarify. Those who are in favor of the motion of Honorable Marcoleta, which is to reduce the budget of CSR to 1,000, please say aye. aye. Those who are against, say nay. Nay! Yeah. The ice habit. Mr. Speaker! Mr. Speaker! Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker! Do we not will... commit the, the mistake of railroading this measure. It's a very important issue. We heard the voice of Congress. We heard a vote of May. It but was you... loud and clear, Mr. Speaker, that the majority leader. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our rules on voting are voting, very. Mr. Speaker. Please. Honorable Villarin, there are rules in the House of Representatives. Section 115 is very clear. And I go to the second paragraph. If the Speaker doubts the result of the voting, or if a motion to divide the House is carried, the House shall divide. The Speaker shall ask those in favor to rise, to be followed by those against. So it is simple, Mr. Speaker. We will now ask those in favor of the motion of the Honorable Villarin to rise. Marcoleta, my corrections, Mr. Speaker. Can we restate the issue, uh, Mr. Speaker, for the guidance of the members of the House? The majority leader will Mr. Uh, restate the issue. And may I request status? all the members to take their seats so you can, you, we, we can count the voting? So, Mr. Speaker, in response to the Honorable Lagman, we are now asking those in favor of the motion of the Honorable Marcoleta to please rise. Those opposed, please stay seated. Please rise. Those who are in favor of the motion of the Honorable Marcoleta reducing the budget of CSR to 1,000 pesos. Please take your seat. Those who are against, please rise. Those voting in favor, 119. Those against, 32. The ayes, the motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, may we clarify the voting? 
No, we just uh, declared that 119 the, voted in favor and uh, yes, yes, yes. 119 voted in favor of the 1,000 budget of CHR. So and, and only 32, 32 voted Mr. against. Speaker. So will that constitute a quorum, Mr. Speaker? If we add the the yes and the yes, no votes? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, and th and there are those who did not vote. But uh, we have uh, 151. Uh, with this number, we have a quorum. As for your kind indulgence, because of the problem of the arm budget, few minutes lang, 10 to 15 minutes, then we will go to voting and second reading. May issue lang yung arm. Thank you, Your Honors. In the meantime, may empanada pa yata tong.